I was in grade 9 or 10, so high school, and we were going on a class field trip to Canada's Wonderland. It was a great trip, and we ended up leaving late around 10 p.m., so it was already dark. We took some backcountry roads on our way back. It was nothing but dark fields for miles. At some point during the ride, when most of my classmates were asleep, I looked out the window and just gazed absently into the darkness. There was absolutely nothing out there. Just a deep, devouring blackness. Then, all of a sudden, while I'm looking out there, I saw the field light up with this incredible golden light. Far off in the field, maybe about a half mile away, I saw this massive building. I only saw it for about 10 seconds, But from what I saw, I can only compare it to a palace. It had a huge dome-shaped window that I could see through, even from the distance I was at. The golden light was coming from a huge chandelier that hung above a landing of a split staircase. To this day, I've never seen a chandelier as big as the one I saw through that window. I can easily say that it was about the size of a school bus. Probably even bigger considering I was pretty far away from it. And then, suddenly, it was gone. The field was dark again, and there was no castle. No one else seemed to notice, so maybe I just hallucinated the whole thing? Maybe. But I don't think so. I've driven past that same area since then in the daylight, and there aren't any houses of any kind there, castles or otherwise, only farmers' fields. So what exactly did I see that night? Did I catch a glimpse into some sort of alternative reality? If so, who or what could live in a palace like that? I wish I could find out, but I don't think that's possible. This happened in Ireland, in County Dublin. While traveling at night on a road that ran up some mountains with my fiancé, we decided to pull off the road at a lay-by to look at the view of the city lights. The view was breathtaking. But as we stood there taking it all in, we noticed this shapeless white form moving quickly up the mountainside. At first, I thought it was a white shopping bag blowing around in the wind. But then I realized it was actually moving against the wind and uphill. As it got closer, I could see that whatever it was seemed to be jumping from tree to tree and was headed straight toward us. It was about two or three square feet in area, and a matte bluish-white color, like a large pillowcase, or like I said earlier, a shopping bag. No markings or features, not anything I could see. Not shiny at all, looked more like a strange cloth than plastic. And yet, it was moving, jumping as if it had weight and was alive. As it moved, it seemed to change shape a little bit. Sort of like Venom from Spider-Man. Both myself, American, and my fiancé, Irish, had a feeling that whatever it was, its intentions were not good. 
We had a general sense that something unpleasant would happen if it caught up to us. So we jumped back in the car and hightailed it out of there. I was with a friend driving back to Nottingham from Darlington, where we had been to see a band. We didn't have a map and got lost. This was in the 80s before cell phones and GPS. Anyway, we took a bunch of wrong turns and were totally confused about where we were. At one point, we found ourselves at the coast, which was nowhere near where we wanted to be. By this time, it was around 3 in the morning, and my friend, who was driving, was so exhausted, we decided to pull into a lay-by on a lonely road so that he could take a nap. He told me to wake him in 15 minutes. While he slept, I sat quietly watching the clock, trying not to nod off myself. But... As I sat there, I started to get this odd feeling that we were being watched from behind the car. It's just one of those feelings you get. I thought I would turn around, see nothing, and be reassured. But when I turned, something was there. I saw a a figure about three feet high walking towards the car. He looked a little like a leprechaun. He had a lined face and a beard, but he wore a black hooded cloak over a dark collared jacket and trousers. He also wore a wide black belt, and he had a sack slung over his shoulder which dragged along the ground. I I saw him clearly. I can't remember if there was a streetlight in the lay-by or if there was moonlight, but I had no trouble making out his features. He was getting closer and closer to the car and seemed to be looking through the window at me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I I turned back around and woke my friend. But I didn't tell him anything. I couldn't speak. I couldn't say anything about what I'd just seen because I guess I hadn't really accepted it. I thought I had to be imagining things, but I just wanted to get out of there anyway. When my friend woke, as he turned to put on his seatbelt, he also looked out the window in the same direction as I had seen the, the thing, and his eyes went wide with fear. Immediately, he started the car and shot off down the road. I was so frightened that I just sat there staring down at my hands. Maybe a hundred yards down the road, my friend braked suddenly and cried out. I thought he was losing control of the car. But then he seemed to get hold of it again and slammed on the gas and kept going. I asked him what had happened and... He described the same hooded figure I had seen back at the lay-by. He said he had braked because he thought he had seen a second one in the road. I was in shock. This meant, for certain, I hadn't imagined anything. Whatever that thing was, it was real. Then my friend told me he had seen these creatures before near his home in Knott's. And they were always on the road, dragging sacks. Fairies exist. I was on this backcountry road in Northern California amidst the redwood, oak, and bay trees. My friend and I were driving at night to visit my family who didn't live very far away, and we decided to go the scenic route. As we were driving along, a tiny little being flew up in front of the car and up to the windshield and then flew off. 
This was no moth, no butterfly, as it was winter time. This was also no bird. It had the shape of a human body with wings, and it was glowing. I don't know any moths or birds that glow at night. It was very bright and luminous. As it flew off, my friend and I looked at each other. Did you see that? I asked right away. And my friend said, The fairy? Yeah, I saw that. We could hardly believe it. We had just seen a fairy. An actual fairy. I didn't believe in fairies before this incident, but when the truth practically flies up in your face, it's hard to deny it. I have a second story that happened on the same road. This time, I was alone in broad daylight. It was April 2022. It was a beautiful spring day, and I decided to go for a drive down this same road to pick some bay leaves. I parked the car and went walking by myself. No one was on the road, also no houses for a ways away. As I was walking along, I felt that feeling of being watched that you get, but it didn't feel negative or frightening or foreboding. I looked around for an animal thinking it could be a bird or a squirrel or a fox, but saw nothing. So I turned back around to take a picture of this beautiful oak tree with purple spring wildflowers blossoming beneath it, when from behind me came this whitish glowing little orb that whizzed right past me and up into the tree. This wasn't a trick of the light. I thought it might have been at first, but then I saw the orb again, hovering behind the tree. It seemed to be peeking out at me, as if to see what I was doing. So I said, uh, pardon me? Because I thought maybe I had disturbed something I shouldn't have disturbed. I left some of my honey and rice cake behind for it because it was the only sweet thing I had with me as an offering. I don't know what's going on on that road, but... I'm pretty sure fairies have something to do with it. This happened when I was a kid. I was excited as we were going out for the day. I was buckled into a seat in the back of my granddad's car, waiting for my sister to join us. As I sat there alone, I noticed a creature in the hedgerow at the side of the road, hovering around the blackberries. It was about two inches in height. It had thin wings like a crane fly and a very slim, upright body with two long legs and larger feet. I didn't see arms, but the creature had what looked like a raggedy skirt on. It was orangey-brown in color. I pointed it out to my brother and my nan, who saw something, but they were further away, so they didn't see any details. When my sister and granddad came out of the house, it went behind the tree. I was fascinated by insects as a child, and still am now but was unable to identify the thing in any book that I found. I'm totally open to someone debunking my story and identifying it as some sort of bug. I suppose it could have been an alien, but I don't really imagine them as small things that hover around hedges. So, until proven otherwise, I believe what I saw was a fairy.
This happened around August, September 1991 in Cornwall. I was driving down a country road with hedgerows on either side, traveling at a speed of around 45 to 50 miles per hour. It was night and I had my then wife and baby son in the car with me. I didn't realize it at the time, but I had taken a wrong turn and wasn't on the road I thought I was on. So there I was, driving along, when everything went very silent. I didn't have the radio on because my wife and son were sleeping, but the hum of the car, the sound of the wheels rolling over bumps in the road, these sounds just stopped. Then I felt compelled to glance over into the hedgerow, and there I saw a brown leathery-skinned, very angry-looking old man, standing about two, two and a half feet high, completely naked apart from a loincloth type of clothing. His face was very, very old-looking, with a hooked nose and large ears. He was bald or had very little hair and had noticeably large hands. He was pointing right at me with his index finger. What happened in that instant seemed to last forever. I was so shocked by this thing, I braked sharply, only to realize the road ahead was falling sharply towards a seawall. If I hadn't braked in that instant, I would have driven over the seawall and over the cliff face. This is when I realized I was not on the road I thought I was on. I looked back, and the creature was gone. The whole thing was disconcerting. The leathery thing had looked angry, malicious. And yet, I consider this pixie, or whatever it was, to have saved our lives. If I hadn't seen it, and if I hadn't braked... I would not be here to tell you this story. I just knew upon seeing it what it was. Its appearance was of something that could be described in a nursery rhyme. I don't know what fairies are or if they mean us well. I do know that it did frighten me enough to not want to see another. But I'm still around, so I don't know what to think. All I know is that the events of that night have and will stay with me forever. I was in Cornwall, driving through a small village near Hale. It was a windy night, little traffic on the road, and I was driving quite slowly, as these were country roads without much light. Soon I came to a crossroad, which did have some street lighting, and I was aware of movement coming toward me. People, carts. The first thing I was able to make out clearly was a very small horse, only a little larger than a Labrador dog. The horse was a pale sort of electric blue, and there was white in its mane. I went rigid as the horse got closer and held my breath, and the horse cantered right past my car and looked through the window directly at me. This thing wasn't normal. It wasn't right. I couldn't move. I was so frightened, so I just stared ahead stiffly as the horse trotted forward. It was followed by other creatures, possibly humanoid, though I was too scared to turn and look at them directly. Something, I don't know what, passed between me and the horse, and I had this strong feeling that the creature was reading my state of mind and attitude. 
and suddenly I wasn't afraid anymore. Odder still, I was full of joy and not surprised at all by what I was seeing. The procession soon passed into the darkness, and I went on my way. It was some time later before the feeling of joy passed, and surprise came as I reflected on what I had undoubtedly seen. I had previously had an interest in fairy folklore. I'm a teacher, and when I was teaching in Wales, one of my intelligent six-formers told me that several members of her family had seen Tuluithteg, as they are known in Welsh, near a mound in some of the fields of her family farm. The reason I mention this is to express that at the time of seeing the fairy horse, Kelpie? I was and remain predisposed to believe rather than doubt what I was seeing. In other words, I believed in the existence of other dimensions of reality normally not perceptible by humans. I believe that what we call fairies are non-malignant, dangerous only if treated with disrespect. And they were out and about that night, as they sometimes are, and just happened to cross my path. Coming home along an empty country road in daylight, in springtime, my husband driving, I was in the passenger seat. We were crossing a bridge over the river Barrow and came around a gentle bend in the road. Our turnoff was to the right and was in the distance, about five yards away on my side of the road. A woman was walking. She was about four to five feet tall, Short, dark hair, with her back to me. She wore a fitted black jacket and a full black skirt, with a red design around the hem. I saw her very clearly as it was daylight, but she didn't stop or turn around as we approached. She didn't wave or put up her hand, which is the usual practice in the Irish countryside. We passed her, but didn't look back at her. She was so real that I asked my husband why he didn't indicate and pull out to give her more room. But he hadn't seen her at all. I don't understand how he could have missed her. It just wasn't possible. And I was so sure I had seen her that I asked him to turn the car around. We returned to the place where I'd seen the woman and stopped. We got out. No sign of her. No houses where she could have gone. Just nothing. Now, the wider area is known for fairies. It has fairy paths and a fairy tree. So I immediately started thinking I might have seen one of them. I don't know for sure that it was a fairy. It might have been a spirit or a ghost. I think fairies are spirits of nature creatures who are part of the land and associated with special, powerful places. I've had a few sightings of what I think might be fairies since, but I've only ever had these sightings since I have moved to rural Ireland. I might have had a sighting when I was a child as well, when I spent my summers in the countryside on the Isle of Man. My grandmother was a native Manx speaker, who believed in the little people, as did my mother. Now, I understand why. I'm an investigator. I was working on a missing air case looking for a family on the Isle of Man. At the end of a very long day, I was in a taxi driving from a farm back to my hotel in Castletown. 
The driver took me on a route down a lonely country road. We eventually came to a bridge, and he muttered a greeting as we crossed it. I asked him why, and he told me it was a ferry bridge, and it was only right to be respectful. A few moments later, the driver braked suddenly. I looked to see why he had stopped and saw, in the headlights of the taxi and several feet ahead, three strange forms moving across the road. It looked like some sort of procession. The forms were moving in threes and were six to eight inches tall and maybe five inches broad. They were not humanoid in shape, but looked as though they were flat rather than 3D, like a flat sheet of card with jagged edges. They moved from the left to the right of the country road. Strangely, they appeared in the headlights to be bright pink. The driver saw this too, but couldn't explain it. Eventually, the forms faded into darkness and we went on our way. I was baffled. The comments made earlier by the driver suggested fairies, but I suppose it could have been something else. But I can't think for the life of me what that might be. The flatness of the forms was so strange, almost as though we were seeing projections or shadows on a wall. But there was nothing around that could have created such an effect. It was like the taxi's light had momentarily beamed through to another world. And what we saw was only a shadow of what was really there. This happened years ago now, but the memory has lasted clearly since then, like it happened yesterday. By nature, I am a skeptical person, an investigator, and I've always tried to examine things with a view to find a rational explanation. I've never been able to find one for this. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all the subscribers who submitted their stories. Let me know what you thought of these in the comments. If you have a story to share, you can check out my website at scaryfairygodmother.com. Link in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your stories, comments, questions, or suggestions. You can also sign up for my mailing list there, Fairy Lights. It's free to sign up. If you already signed up for Fairy Lights, please check your inbox for my latest entry. If you don't see it, check your social or promotions folder or your spam filter and make sure to whitelist Fairy Lights for next time. As always, special thanks goes out to all my supporters on Patreon and to anyone who joined the channel or made a one-time donation through PayPal or Coffee. You guys are the best. I really appreciate you guys so much and the support you are giving this work. If you like this content and would like to support it, please check out my Patreon page and the other support options in the description below. Any support you can give is greatly, greatly appreciated. The stories in this video came courtesy of subscribers and the fairy senses, so thanks to everyone who submitted. The stories were edited for dramatic and narration reasons, but if you would like to read the original census stories, please find the link to the Fairy Investigation Society in the description below. Please leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe if you're new. It really, really helps the channel when you do that, and hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time... This has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother. <laughs>